So as you can see, I finally got round to editing the rest of the Glastonbury footage. Uh, so if you haven't seen the previous video, we went to Glastonbury Town and I held back the rest of the footage, which is here. Um, so this is a quick intro to the first bit, which is Glastonbury Abbey, which kind of, I think, probably boasts some of the best things in the world. Uh, claims to be where Arthur, King Arthur and Guinevere were buried and were dug up and you'll see a bit more information about that. Um, but also has something to do with Thomas a Beckett. So why was that Thomas a Beckett? Glastonbury. Archbishop, <laughs> Archbishop Thomas Beckett was murdered in 1170 by four knights who claimed to be acting on Henry's wishes. That's King Henry? Wait a minute. This is it. I heard about this before. Yeah, I'll put a link to this. On the 24th of May, 1184, a devastating fire swept through the abbey. The fire was a catastrophe and the monks urgently needed funds to rebuild the abbey. The apparently miraculous discovery of the graves of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere only a few years after the fire provided a very welcome potential source of income. Modern historians have argued that the monks may have staged the exhumation of Arthur and Guinevere to attract royal patrons and pilgrims and their money to Glastonbury. Uh, there's also the Glastonbury Thorn. Oh, God, I've got to do so much research. I thought I was just doing a quick intro. Glastonbury Thorn. It is associated with legends about Joseph of Arathamia. <laughs> Joseph of Arimathea and the arrival of Christianity in Britain and has appeared in written text texts since the medieval period period ah. a flowering sprig is sent to the British monarchy monarchy every Christmas the original tree has been propagated several times with one tree growing at Glastonbury Abbey and another in the churchyard of the Church of St John the original Glastonbury thorn was cut down and burned as a relic of superstition during the English Civil War. Oh, yeah, I heard about this. And one planted on Weary Hill in 1951 to replace it had its branches cut off in 2010. Oh, all over the place here. King Henry II may have played a role in finding Arthur's grave. It was claimed that he informed the monks that Arthur was buried at Glastonbury after being told by an ancient Welsh bard. Henry may have had personal motives for wanting a royal cult of Arthur at Glastonbury. Henry was a member of the French ruling class and a new cult of Arthur would connect him with the story of the heroic and saintly British king. Such a cult might usefully attract attention away from the cult of Thomas Becket at Canterbury. Archbishop Thomas Becket was murdered in 1170 by four knights who claimed to be acting on Henry's wishes. Despite, despite hotly denying this, Henry II was popularly blamed for Becket's death. Henry II remained a patron of Glastonbury until his death in 1189. Way more intro than I was intending. The bit about the Abbey and most of this has got some fairly long shots in it but I just really want to just like the one with the town I just want to give you a vibe you know of the the sounds and the sights and the sounds without just rushing through everything with backing music. I want you to feel like you're there so I hope you enjoy this. Please like, subscribe, ding the bell, comment below and um, that's it. So we're at Glastonbury Abbey and I'm not quite sure what this is but it's a little church and we're about to go and look around the ruins of Glastonbury Abbey but as we came in the guy that we bought a ticket off he's subscribed to my channel 
and I'll link to one of his videos below because he's into maths and he's made a video about the golden rectangle. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'll put, I'll swing the camera around so you can see these candles here. There you go. So I guess that was St. Patrick's Chapel. So here we are at the site of the ancient graveyard where in 1191 the monks dug to find the tombs of Arthur and Guinevere. Which I'm sure, I'm sure there are lots of competing stories and sites but it's interesting. I'm just going to move the camera up. So you can see some of the ruins, they're out of focus aren't they, I think. I'm going to zoom out. Thank you. That sounds good.
Another kind of quick intro thing, and this one is going to be really quick. The next few scenes are, first of all, Chalice Well, which is my favourite place in Glastonbury, and Glastonbury is my favourite place in England. So the Chalice Well is just, it's lovely. Um, I think when we went there a few years ago, it was £4.50. Sorry, it was, I think when we went there a few years ago, it was a pound. But this time it was four pounds fifty each, I think. Um, it's somewhere where there's no mobile phones, no photographs, no filming. Very peaceful place, somewhere that you can chill out. And it's got this spring of water that's got so much iron in it. You can see that it just makes everything look a rusty red. Um, you'll also see the symbol, a symbol that's very similar to the logo for my channel, because. Um, I was thinking of Chalice Well when I when I set up my channel because I love the place and it was great to go back. And um, so you've got Chalice Well, and then if you come out of there and turn left, and then head as if you were going to go up Glastonbury Tor, but instead of going up Glastonbury Tor, you go up just a little bit further up, up the road that goes up uphill. Really bad description here, and I probably won't have time to put a map in. But anyway, very, very close to Chalice Well, there's another spring that's in a cave. And the cave is all full of candles. And there are two springs, like, really, really close to each other. And I read the other day they called it the Red Spring and the White Spring. And uh, it's supposed to be quite unusual that they're so close to each other. Um, and then you can walk. And then, basically, Chalice Well, the spring in the cave with the candles... And Glastonbury Tor are all really close to each other. So that's what all the... So just a quick explanation, really, of what's coming up.
Quite steep over to the right, isn't it? We're walking back down from Glastonbury Tor. A little break in the clouds, a bit of blue sky. The clouds have been really mean and moody today and yesterday. Yesterday we saw something that looked like a big, almost looked like a big funnel cloud, didn't it? We went past two or three things yesterday that looked like they could be thunderstorms. But as far as we know, there weren't any. down on Avalon from Glastonbury Tour. It looks like the front cover of the Lemon Jelly album. Okay, I've probably got the wrong lens on for this and it's all um, it's just focusing on the windscreen but um, we I think we arrived in Glastonbury at about 10 o'clock this morning would you would you say about 10 ish half 10 let's say half 10 because we had the parking for four hours didn't we which was 220 or something like that so it was just that we arrived in Glastonbury just after 10 this morning we um, we parked for four hours, we walked round the centre and we went round the abbey. Then we went to the chalice, then we put m another four hours on the car, didn't we? Yep. And we went to the chalice well and we went up the tour and you've probably seen a load of footage of all of that. And we've literally got, we were two minutes, well five minutes walk away from the car and it started raining and we've managed to stay dry. So we feel like we've kind of won, we've won the game today. We've got like four things, we've got loads of photos and footage. So yeah, I just wanted to record that little bit at the end. And that was our day in Glastonbury. Uh, I'll turn the camera off. Okay, re recording a little voice over here. I just wanted to say that if you look sort of through the middle of the tennis court and straight up, Behind the trees is actually Glastonbury Tor. You can't see it with this lens, but you could see Glastonbury Tor. This is where we stayed. Um, big, uh, what was it called? Big cottage, Fenny Castle. Um, really modern, really clean. Um, big open plan, living room, kitchen with three bedrooms. And um, really just bent over backwards to give us a comfortable stay. Strongly recommended. We're on the way home and we've come to Breen Sands, which is somewhere where Marie used to go when she was a kid. And uh, the sea from here just looks like a big solid lump of sand. It's very brown, I have to say. Um, I was hoping we could walk up to the sea, 
but apparently there's quicksand or something. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> it's dangerous to go up there. But where we are now, I'll just put the camera down. It's nice kind of, um, it's kind of sand. It's nice. And it's a bit windy. And um, the area that we're in has lots of little caravan parks and B&Bs with palm trees out the front and all that stuff. It's lovely. Absolutely no idea what I said there. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. And wow, if you got this far, according to my stats, nobody watches a whole video. Thank you. Bye.